So in a previous video, I showed how you can use the primitive follows along with uh, proximity wrap to basically create define your inputs or like your kind of uh, your bind areas for the different um, inputs that you want. So like for the this arm joint here is only impacting the kind of arm area. This elbow um, is only impacting like the elbow and so on. Now this is really cool if you're able to use the proximity wrap. But what if you what if you actually have to uh, I'll put this into a game engine or you have to use a skin cluster for some reason. Well, we can still use the same actual setup and drive a skin cluster. So let me just go and I'll uh, delete history on this type here. And what I'll do is I'll go and I'll just bind this using a skin cluster again. And I'm just going to do, oh, sorry, I used proximity wrap. And you can now see that if I do this, we've got horrible weighting and everything is awful. So what we can do now is that if I go back in here, uh, I will still have, uh, let me just find these here again. We still have basically our kind of fall off system and we have all of our weighting and all of these kind of uh, data going on here. So what we can do is we can go um, back in and we can utilize this to actually get uh, some data to our skin cluster. And this is actually possible, let me just go here, because on the skin cluster, you've got the waitlist attribute. And what we can actually use is that we can use a fall off eval. And what this actually does is that it will take in some weight functions and with passing in a geometry to it as well, it will basically evaluate those weight functions and spit out per vertex values for that geometry. And these per vertex values, we can connect into our wait list. I'm not going to, oh crap. <laughs> you can see here, this is actually for each uh, individual kind of vertex going on here. So it's a long list. So we can push this in here and that will give us basically our vertex skinning for each um, part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the different, uh, so we've got our unit form, just go and I'll, whoops, sorry, I'll get rid of this. I'll add these in here. And what I'll do is we want to do, so I think I've got the clavicle. I don't need that. Uh, I don't need that one. Uh, yep. Yeah. Cool. So I will add these in here. So what we can do again is that we'll add in our kind of uniform fall off here. And you can actually see here that if I take this, so one thing to note here, that's really important is that you add these in the, um, the kind of order that you need these to be added in, uh, sorry, that you, you basically have your influences. So if I just get rid of these and I'm just going to get rid of these just to kind of, so it'll basically be the order that you see in your kind of matrix here. Uh, so if we go and we see these inputs here and we'll go here, so we can basically see that the first one that we start with is the spine, then we go the shoulder, then we go the arm, then we go the forearm, and then we go the left hand. So that's basically the order that we need to add in our kind of input, our weight functions here as well. So. First off is that this is the kind of uniform fall off that we created, which it was the one that we wanted for the spine here. So we'll add that in here. And then the second one is the kind of clavicle. So we'll just add that in directly. And the third one was for the arm, which was where we needed to do this kind of adding and subtraction here. So I'll add that in there. And then the last one was basically for the, um, for the forearm. And um, I don't really have anything for the arm here. So honestly, that uh, I'm going to 
just go and remove that for now. I'm just going to delete it and make my life a tiny, sorry, now I'm going to actually remove it. Skin cluster, remove influence, just so that we just have these four that we actually want to give in any weight values for. Cool. Okay. So now that we have that, oh, I'm just going to reorder this here a bit. Now that we have this fall off eval here, we can now go and pass in a geometry. So what I'll do is I'll just do the org shape for this body. So I'll take the out mesh, do that into the current and the original. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if we always need to do the both ones, but I've had issues that if I only do one of them, it's crashing, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that, don't quote me. Um, but if we go and we do that now, we can go and we can take this and connect it into the wait list here. And we got some kind of weird things going on here. But let's see, does this still work? So you can actually see here now that, hmm, it's not really doing something. So let's try and do DG dirty here. And yep, that kind of kicks it in here. So one thing that I've noticed is that the fall off eval seems to need a bit of a kick as soon as you have kind of blend fall offs in the same network. So just be aware of that. I just do a DG dirty dash A to kind of kick everything. Now that doesn't really explain what's happening here. Now let's have a look and see what's kind of happening here. So you can see that we actually have our, our weights painted for the whole body and we've subtracted the left shoulder here and our arm is here and our left arm is here. And actually you can see here now that this has a value of one and this also has a value of one. So that's basically just an issue with the kind of transitioning here where both of these influences are giving like a vertex value of one to both of these, basically doubling up this. Now, this is because we're using a skin cluster uh, with basically normalizing weights interactively. But if we change this to post, then that kind of fixes the issue. So that we can now, now we've gone and Maya will kind of normalize those weights for us afterwards. Um, so you can see as we're kind of moving this around, it will actually still update our skin cluster. So we still have this ability here to keep all of this live. And this is where um, I haven't really found like a really great things of how to um, fully blend these together yet. It's something that I still need to play with. Um, I'm sure there's ways that we can get these to kind of blend nicer, but you can see that you have to work with it a bit. And depending on like the setups that you need, this might not be exactly uh, right for you. But this is basically how you could take an already existing kind of network that you have and push it into a skin cluster. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention with um, kind of updating the skinning is the fact that as soon as we have basically our skin cluster kind of being driven by our kind of follow system here, what we can do is that we can go in and still change the body type. So I can go and change the body type to B and we can see that we get still the same kind of issues that we had before. But if I now go in and I just move these a bit, I'll just move it and like undo, we still get like all the weighting updating because now it's looking at that new geometry coming in there. If I go to C, you can see that's just completely broken until we go and actually move this and kind of update this network. So that's something that's really, really useful for this as well. Um, if you have a lot of different topology geometries that you need to, for instance, like uh, pass through or like uh, update throughout your kind of pipeline, this can absolutely be a time saver if you can get like a really nice kind of shaping update, uh, shaping with these kind of volume primitives going on here.